You might be familiar with Kant's essay answering the question what is enlightenment, but you might not know about Mendelssohn's paper on the question what does to enlighten mean. Whereas Kant's essay tries to define enlightenment and presents enlightenment as a practical task and a concern of practical reason, Mendelssohn stresses the theoretical problems enlightenment raises. Rather than defining enlightenment, Mendelssohn asks what it means to enlighten. Mendelssohn distinguishes between culture and enlightenment, telling us that they combine to constitute education. Education is thus linked to both enlightenment and culture, and the three are involved in the improvement of our social condition. The relation between enlightenment and culture is similar to the relation between theory and practice, or between knowledge and ethics. Culture applies more to phenomena such as excellence, finesse, beauty, arts, proficiency, hard work, skill, inclinations, drives, and habits. Enlightenment seems, by contrast, to refer more to the theoretical dimension, meaning it refers to rational knowledge and to proficiency at rationally reflecting upon things of human life. We can talk of two types of enlightenment. The enlightenment that interests the human being as a human being is universal, devoid of any class distinction. The enlightenment of the human being, considered as a citizen, is modified based upon standing and profession. The enlightenment of human beings can come into conflict with the enlightenment of citizens. Certain things which are useful to the human being as a human being can at times be harmful to them as a citizen, or vice versa. Whereas Kant reduces emancipation to enlightenment, Mendelssohn suggests that emancipation cannot simply be reduced to enlightenment. For Mendelssohn, what's important is education, and enlightenment is just a part of education, albeit a crucial part. Enlightenment is a project that needs to be developed in relation to culture. For Mendelssohn, enlightenment is not emancipation, but a powerful tool that can protect us against authority. The worst type of government is a government in which the enlightenment which is indispensable to humanity cannot extend to all classes in the realm without the constitution of that government being in danger of perishing. Out of necessity, such a government might prescribe laws that are to be laid upon humanity in order to oppress it. The education of a nation which, as we said earlier, is composed of culture and enlightenment, helps the nation to be far less subject to corruption. A balanced relation between enlightenment and culture is the best means of defense against corruption. Ultimately, we might manage to build a nation that is highly cultured and enlightened, but as Mendelssohn warns us, the nobler a thing's perfection, the ghastlier is its decomposition. The same goes for culture and enlightenment. The nobler they are in their blossoming, the more abominable they are when they deteriorate and decompose. Interestingly enough, Mendelssohn warns us that too much prosperity can become a problem for a nation. A nation which has come through education to the highest pinnacle of national prosperity is, precisely because of that, in danger of falling since it can climb no higher.